Shelter is ranked second in the hierarchy of human needs, being the most important after food in order of importance for survival. Nigeria, the most populous country in Africa and the eighth most populous country in the world, is facing serious housing challenge. This is evident in the available statistics, indicating that 87% of the total population of households in the country live in rented apartments. While specifically in Lagos, 60% of residents are tenants living housing demand to an estimated figure of approximately 2.17 million annually. Most of the existing accommodation units are provided by private investors and tenants have to pay rent as high as 50 to 70 percent of their monthly incomes. Glad to have you join me on yet another informative episode of Housing Development. As usual, I am Fleur Arnie, your housing diva. Let's see the news making rounds in the sector. I'll be back shortly. President Mohamed Bwari has approved allocation of houses to members of the victorious Super Eagle squad that won the 1994 African Cup of Nations in Tunisia 27 years after the win. According to a statement from the presidency, each of the players, including the late Ucho Okafo, Stephen Keshi, Wilfred Apovere, and Thompson Oliha, will get a three-bedroom house in their preferred state in fulfillment of a promise by the federal government. Nigeria won the 1994 tournament at the Stade El Mensa with former Barcelona striker Emmanuel Amunike winning a goal which gave the team led by Clemens Westerhoff a 2-1 win over Zambia. President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, is asking Nigerians to stop blaming federal lawmakers for the non-rehabilitation of the National Assembly, which led to the leaking of its roof following a downpour on Tuesday. Lawan was speaking during plenary on a point of order raised on the matter by Senator Sabi Abdullahi noted that those blaming the lawmakers were doing so in ignorance, explaining that the Federal Capital Development Authority is in charge of maintenance of structures within the National Assembly premises. Many Nigerians had taken to social media after a report of the leaking roof hit the media space on Tuesday. The Federal Government of Nigeria is reviewing the Land Use Act of 1978 to delete sections inhibiting economic development in it. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, disclosed this during the opening ceremony of the 51st Annual Conference of the Nigerian Institute of Estate Surveyors and Valuers in Abuja, that the federal government is aware of challenges posed by the Land Use Act of 1978 to the building and construction sector. The SGF says the review would be done speedily in order to foster economic development, especially now that government is championing diversification and calls on estate surveyors and valuers to work with government at the reviewing process. The federal government says it is committing $1 billion on three flagship road projects in Nigeria as one of selected interventions of the government to boost the economy. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo identified these projects as the Lagos Ibada Expressway, Second Niger Bridge, and Abuja Kaduna Zaria Kanu Expressway. The Vice President says government also approved Executive Order 7, which essentially mobilizes private investment through a tax credit scheme to encourage the private sector invest in road construction for tax rebates. Also, Sibajo says implementation of the Highway Development and Management Initiative is ongoing. This is a public-private partnership program to mobilize at first over a trillion naira in private investment for the development and maintenance of 1,963 kilometers of 12 roads. Sydney's houses with crumbling walls, shredded ceilings, bathrooms and kitchens stripped of fixtures are getting snapped up for millions as buyers try to grab a slice of Australia's soaring property markets. The real estate agents handling a derelict brick cottage in the city's northwest sold for $1.20 million, a price that was much more than expected. Photographs on the property agent's website showed turn carpets, tattered roll-up blinds, and a green caked kitchen. Despite the condition of the house, buyers were attracted by the nearly 500 square meters of land on which the house stands.
The chance to be a homeowner in Abuja is here, thanks to Demark Integrated Projects Limited, unveiling the Demark Hillview Estate in Kubwa, Abuja, which boasts of luxury flats with the option of two or three bedrooms with flexible payment plans. Demark Hillview Estate features water body supply and borehole, dedicated transformer, adequate drainage systems, spacious ensuite bedrooms, and CCTV with 24 hour on site monitoring. We also have duplexes in Kabusa and City Gate. For inquiries, visit Demark Hillview Estate behind Liberty Hotel near Living Faith Church, Biajin, Kubwa, Abuja. You can visit our website www.demarkprojects.com or send an email to demarkprojects at gmail.com. You can also call 0803-4506-661 or 0802-6384-618 or 0815-7002-799. Demark Hillview Estate, a place you can call home. For more housing finance, construction news, visit www.africanhousingnews.com. The Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency has advised states, local government and individuals to take early precautionary measures to avoid flooding this raining season. Against this backdrop, the national president of the Nigerian Institute of Town Planners in this report advocates for proper planning to prepare for the rains ahead. Nigeria, with a population of over 200 million people, is annually confronted with flooding during the rainy seasons, mainly due to a lack of proper planning and the provision of necessary infrastructure. This has resulted in widespread devastation, loss of life, properties, and damages to critical public infrastructure. According to the World Health Organization, between 1998 to 2017, floods affected more than 2 billion people globally leaving individuals and households with massive financial losses. National President Nigeria Institute of Town Planners says Nigerians must prepare for the rains ahead to avoid loss of lives and properties to flood. Drainages, gutters and structures blocking waterways must be cleared out. If you look at geographical maps, you look at Google, you will see that there is a natural provision for water to move. When we say water finds its level, it's because there, there's, there's a structure, structured path for it. Water will pass through valleys, water will go through, through the rivers and streams. Those are really the drainage facilities. The drains we have in front of our houses are only helping to connect to those ones. So what should first happen is that state authorities, municipal authorities, those in charge of settlement, must first ensure that those primary drainage facilities, the streams, the rivers, are not clogged. They are not silted, because there are times they are silted. So when water gets in the, to them, they swell immediately. And it is, they are overflowing that first creates flooding. So they must ensure that those ones are not clogged. Secondly, the secondary, secondary drainage facilities, those are the canals that we now build to drain larger areas, must also be desilted. In most cases, they are silted in Nigeria because we are even unable to control how we dispose of our wastes. So a lot of wastes end up getting into the canal. So rather than have canals that flow, we have canals that are clogged. And then, of course, we we'll come to the tertiary drains, those ones that are by our houses, and ensure that they are clear. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development reports on climate change states that globally, floods cost more than $40 billion in damages annually, with an increase in death rates in recent years to more than 100 people a year. Meanwhile, National President Nigeria Institute of Town Planners, speaking with housing development, says Nigeria will continue to lose millions of naira to flood if proactive measures are not taken. They really need to go back 
and look at those laws. They need to go back and know that the laws are about the people they have chosen to govern. Because when, even when we are talking about planning, we are talking about planning because of two dominant factors. One, man. Two, environment. As the rains intensify, town planners insist that renewed focus must be steered on the crucial need for flood risk mitigation plan and urgent attention given to flood risk management more than ever before, while efforts must be made to adopt safety measures that can avert loss of lives and properties. There are areas that are being planned now that have not been built yet. Many developers do not understand that they must establish a relationship between the level of the road system and the level of their building. Because anytime you do not establish that, there is the possibility or likelihood of the road being higher than your plot. If that happens, anytime the rain falls, rather than your house draining into the gutter by the road, the, the gutter on the road will rather drain into your house. So it's important that developers should, should involve the relevant professionals as they construct. So they establish a datum below which they must not develop so that at the time they are concluding their physical development, there is a possibility, there is that chance, the compelling reason for their houses to drain into the system and that helps the overall drainage facility. Town planner Oluto Yayinde there, the national president, Nigerian Institute of Town Planners. All right, moving on. When deciding where to live or get an apartment, there are crucial factors you should put into consideration. Why some consider just the cost of the property, others might just consider the level of security and voices on the streets. Let's see what some Nigerians consider when searching to buy or rent an apartment. Um, one, you, the cost of the house, that is the one. Secondly, the proximity to your workplace, how far is it? To me, I prefer my workplace to be close to where I live, that's all. Okay, whichever way, either for renting or for buying, first and foremost, I will consider costs. The cost of buying or renting the house in consideration with what I have because I need to cut my coat according to my clothes. The second thing I need to consider is security. Security of life is very important. The third thing I need to consider is proximity. How close is it from where I live to my working place and other areas I need to go for my life-changing activities. I think these three things are very necessary. The question when renting a house, you know, when renting a house, you have to look at the location and that thing you consider the power, that is the light and the, um, the water. And it's very, very important too. You know, this time around over here in Abuja, we have to be very, very careful renting a house. So consideration of these three things, the location one, the water and then the light is very, very important. Interesting. I will consider the cost, the environment, the location. Um, first is the road, so it's the the infrastructure. Hope it's hope it meets standard. Hope it's not something that, will, that needs high maintenance. So, and it's, third is something that doesn't break the bank. I consider accessible road. I consider water and constant electricity, because that's what makes life uh, uh, comfortable and uh, uh, important in life. If you don't have good water and if you don't have good accessible road, you'll not be able to apply. You'll not be able to, 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 to drive your car. Or even people will, will not even be happy to even come and visit you as well. 
is the location does it have a government approval to avoid litigation to avoid problem with land speculators and government tomorrow not after building your developing your property they will not say that no where you're occupying is unofficial it's not approved and you lose your property two i also consider the proximity to where i'm working or doing my business i wouldn't want a situation where i have to travel for about 25 kilometers before i get to my house you know it's energy sapping and uh, other inconveniences involved so there are things i must and also how close for my children because they are still small where they go to school and I assess them easily fine i must consider that Voices on the street there as we get some Nigerians react to the factors they will consider when searching for a house to buy or rent. It is definitely different strokes for different folks. But in all our advice, you do what best suits you and you live in a place where you'll be very much comfortable. What is the name of my grandson? Suleiman. That's a good name. May the Almighty preserve him. I mean. Now that your family is growing, this is the time for you to start thinking of a house of your own. Abba, the thought of this has always been on my mind. To build a house now, you need a lot of money. And that is what is holding me back. Sunny, what you need is a mortgage. NHF Mortgage Loan. With NHF Mortgage Loan, you own a house up front and pay gradually over a long period of time. Abba, I will go to the FMBN office right away. Come join us at FMBN and let's shelter Nigeria together. Welcome back. Glad to know you're still with us. Convenient, satisfactory and affordable housing is crucial for effective performance of men. But when people affected by poverty are unable to lead a decent life, there is no doubt there will be a decay of the city. And where there are inadequate and unfit housing, the condition of the environment often results to slums and ghettos. There will be the disaster of homelessness. In the next report coming in, we'll try to analyze how Nigerians with stable income can conveniently assess affordable housing. Unemployment has been pinned down as a major contributing factor to the lack of access to affordable housing, even as extensive research establishes that there is a strong connection between poverty and homelessness. A coin with two sides, especially for families who use more than 50% of their household income to pay for rent. In Nigeria today, the challenge of poverty has assumed formidable dimensions with an increase in job loss triggered by the outbreak of COVID-19, further heightening advocacy calls for the provision of employment opportunities for the people, particularly the poor. If everyone is you know, uh, engaged, you have the, uh, the mecha I mean, the block people laying the blocks, you have those bringing chips, you have everything. You have even the architect very busy, the engineers, everyone is busy, so there's employment. Patterns have changed over time, becoming more dramatic as more children between the age of 10 and 20 are caught in the web of homelessness, as against above 40 years in time past. Furthermore, the twin factors of eroding employment opportunities and declining access to finance have continued to account for increased poverty in Nigeria as more people are unable to pay for housing, food, childcare, healthcare, and education. Experts advocate for development of strategies that could better address the root challenge of housing deficits and create more job opportunities, without which the proclaimed vision and agenda of the Muhammad Wari led administration to address the issue of affordable housing in the country will become a mercy. Housing is germane to every living being. Okay? There is no country in the world that has 100% home ownership, but every government try as much as possible to accommodate their citizens. So different kind of policies were put in place. 
a rise in Nigeria's employment data is requested to practically reduce the nation's poverty level, resulting from factors like unemployment, low wages, or discrimination, which could implicate some populations more than others. The call is for government to ensure access to safe and affordable housing through supports for investors in the real estate sector, as this is central to the achievement and improvement of citizens' living standards and national development. I'm Leilani Farha, the UN Special Rapporteur, and I hope you'll keep watching the Housing Development Program. One of the most prominent features of your house is your roof. Your roof will tell how old your building is. At Plus World, we pride ourselves in having the expertise and products to bring your roof back to life. While other roofing companies suggest removing the roof, we restore the roof with warranty assurance. Let Plus World Roofing recoach your old and fading roofs and make your roofs brand new. Our products are eco-friendly and completely harmless to human and the environment. We offer services that will sustain your roof's integrity and by extension, your property value. This includes roof repairs and maintenance for residential, commercial and industrial properties. Our roof restoration solution saves you up to 70% the cost of replacing your roof. Contact Plus World Roofing today. It has been established that poverty and homelessness are strongly correlated, where a loss of income acts as a major factor associated with homelessness. Addressing and preventing homelessness through the eradication of poverty is very crucial. My name is Munia Tagma. I encourage you to watch Housing Development. Truly Nigerian company providing tangible local solutions to the nation's housing needs at a realistic and affordable cost for citizens. Rains and Hammers is on a mission to develop housing projects that the country has not witnessed since the development of Guarimpa in the mid-90s. With a vision of developing over 3,000 housing units on a single site in Abuja, this real estate brand is determined to support Nigerians who desire decent and secure accommodations through affordable financing. The spotlight today is on Brains and Hammers City, which currently has over 200 residents occupying their homes already. Brains and Hammers City is sitting on 117 hectares of land, which we intend to build 3,500 units as we speak today 1,860 are already standing, 1,200 are under construction, and then 1,200 are yet to be built. Um, the ones under construction, we have, we all have um, estimated delivery dates of end of the year. So by the end of this year, we're looking at, at least by the end of this year, we must have built over 2,000 homes, both all, across all boards, the one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, and the four bedrooms. Conceived as a quality, self-sustaining and affordable housing project for middle and low-income earners, Brains and Hammers City flaunts an outstanding infrastructural portfolio that covers thousands of acres of land, even in the face of daunting economic challenges. It's interesting to say that we are a single private company funded privately. There is no government um, contribution or anything from the government. We built the road, which is about 3.7 kilometers. We provided all the infrastructure that we need to do. Everything is already in place. We, this is the first and only project I think that has been built by a private company in the last, in fact, the last time there was anything like this was Guarimpa, which was 1990. Because it's not just an estate, it's a whole city. When I say city, there's going to be a hospital, there's going to be a school, an orphanage, a bank, a shopping mall, a recreational area. Um, there's everything, everything, we're going to have everything. The whole idea, our president's vision was, when you leave here, you don't have to go out there to look for anything. 
So I think um, by the time this project is finished, the residents will tell you that we have everything under our roof. Within the city, we have at about, um, basically we are building up at about 2,250 units of housing at the moment. What we already have on ground that people have already started living in is at about uh, 1,494 uh, units. More than mere residential buildings, Brains and Hammers City is a complete street of up-to-date infrastructure, hospitality and recreation, complete with a perfect road network. Having carved the niche for itself in the real estate sector of Nigeria as a leading brand with insight and expertise, a first choice for premium, luxury and affordable houses, Brains and Hammers restates its commitment to a continuous development and maintenance of healthy living work and play environments across Nigeria. on today's episode of housing development thanks for watching i remain flora arnie your housing diva see you soon